Well, here we go, folks. Let's have a, a look at shrink rip style. The uh, OS volume two of the OST system, the old tactical, old school tactical system from uh, Flying Pig Games. This is the Kickstarter edition. It comes with the uh, strategy guide. It comes with the uh, pocket battles, which we'll look at in a minute. It comes with two neoprene mats that basically take care of all the tactical tracks that uh, go around the edge of the maps. And one of the things that we'll be interested in looking at is seeing if those mat, uh, those uh, tracks are still around the edges of the map or not, and uh, see how much extra space that takes up. Now, I'm gonna need, they're gonna run out of room here, so you're just gonna have to bear with me on this. Let me open up this first of all, and just give a little rundown on the, the track here. So you use, uh, it's a turn countdown system and you accumulate your victory points and you uh, obviously you accumulate uh, casualty points as well which you keep track of based on squads and multi-man counters and single man counters that are killed or weapons teams that are killed and then you uh, get a, a varying number of impulse points per turn which can uh, really change the fortunes of war for both sides and it's typically two dice each or three dice each and you roll those and uh, looks like we now have a die roll modifier for those number of impulses you get but you can end up with some pretty dis disparate rolls there right because uh, if one guy is rolling two dice and he gets uh, two sixes and the other guy has uh, three dice and he gets three ones there's a lot of action on one side not so much on the other and that does create uh, a lot of vari variability in the gameplay and a lot of uh, replay value but it also may uh, make for a very short scenario if if you end up getting some streaky die rolls where uh, clearly one side's going to lose because they had two or three turns where they couldn't do very much. So you you know, you turn that sucker around and restart, I guess. So let's have a look at the main volume. Oh my gosh, these are and these are heavy, big boxes uh, because they have monster maps in them. Uh, I have not had a chance to open this up yet. Shane Logan is the designer of this. It's got a lot of glare on it, sorry. <clears throat> uh, the designer of the game. It's published by Mark Walker's uh, Flying Pig Games. Mark clearly has had, uh, you know, his hand, you can see the fingerprints and his hand on the design of this game. Uh, they've made some changes to the rules in version two, which is great because uh, particularly for, for me, for vehicle, uh, how vehicles are handled, they've changed that significantly. And I think that's a good thing for the uh, for the system because the damage model just really was not working for me in terms of uh, making some vehicles really, really, really hard. Oh, I can't get this open. This box is super tight. I'm trying to open it with a with a die. <laughs> let me get it. Let me get a, a, a knife. Or as I was saying, uh, the I'm really having a hard time getting this box open right now. So great shrink rip job, guys. Uh, the mechanics for damage were a little bit uh, not complicated, but uh, problematic for me. It was just it was too hard to kill a tank. Uh, to win tank on tank combat, so you would get a damage, and, and, the, and uh, then you roll another damage uh, on the machine guns or the turret or the track or whatever, and it wouldn't kill the vehicle. You would just keep getting these. Oh, you killed the MG. Well, I've now fixed that. So that to me was one of the biggest beefs. The line of sight stuff's a little bit of a challenge as well, but because it's different, and it's just a just something you got to get used to. I, I do like. I have enjoyed playing big infantry battles on the Eastern Front. Uh, particularly on the massive Stalingrad map, it's pretty awesome. So here we go. Let's have a look at this guy. Now, did we look at the back of the box? I don't think we did. Uh, a huge 30 by 41 map. That's pretty funny with one in Texas. Uh, three counter sheets. I can see the size there. Luck cards, data cards uh, for the units, play aids, dice, stuff. So. Uh, just open this bad boy. So this is obviously the Western Front module, and you'll have plenty of room to keep all your baggies of units in here. It's nice and deep. Four dice, your rule book, and we're up to version 5.5 of the rules, I guess. So I guess I was wrong. I thought it was two. Looks like there might be some modest. Uh, 
I guess it would help if you could see, right? Let me uh, let me raise up the stand a little bit for you. Sorry about the shaky camera. Uh, not all together here today. I just got off a plane and haven't slept a whole lot, so probably not making a lot of sense. Full color rule book, uh, mostly point to point, point by point, case based rules. Uh, I don't know if there's an index in the back, and I don't believe there is, which you know would be always would be nice. There's an index at the contents at the front though, which is broken down pretty much, pretty detailed. So that's good to see. One, one, I really like the layout of this game. I don't find it particularly hard to play. Uh, some folks have uh, you know raised some concerns about various things, but the support online has been very, very good. So this all looks pretty straightforward stuff. I'm not going to go through looking for the differences between version 1 and version 2, or version 4 and version 5, I should say, of the rules. I do have a copy of the rules that are... Uh, that have highlighted the differences, and at some point I can go through that online if it makes a difference to you, and we'll kind of we'll kind of go for it from there. So there's that rule book, and there's the scenario booklet. Uh, they're all labeled nicely, and let's see. Okay, and they're laid out this time. The first the first uh, module had the the out, laid out in landscape mode, which is really kind of awkward uh, to use. This is a lot better having it uh, done in portrait mode. A bunch of scenarios here. So we've got how many scenarios? There's a, I think that might be some sort of campaign scenario or a solitaire scenario. So 16 scenarios for uh, the base game. And these may well be solo game uh, scenarios. I'm not sure. I have not dug into the detail on this yet. We'll, we'll get to it. Uh, charts, terrain charts, one each. Infantry combat table and vehicle combat, one each. Now, let's have a dig in on the counter, see? Everything looks pretty good here. So the registry is off just a little bit here, but because we've got the space between each one, it's really not too much of a problem. The artwork looks pretty pretty sexy. Let me see if I can zoom in for you a little bit. These look pretty good. Let's see what that looks like when it's punched out. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. I was wanted, I just want to make sure that uh, it didn't look awkward with the uh, because these are off a little bit. And then the infantry guys right here. They're all looking good, well registered, beautiful, uh, big counters that just pop, pop straight out. Uh, really nicely done. And the Americans. You've got some uh, Shermans and different bits and pieces here. I'm trying to zoom in and out for you, but the camera is refusing to do that. There we go. This is 76 millimeter. Chat, whoa, easy now. And then up here we've got different rifle uh, rifle squads, leaders. Uh, looks like the leaders have names now, that's nice. And then uh, counters for uh, tracking everything. So let me uh, just get my knee out of the way here. This is uh, gonna be your, uh, your uh, luck cards that you use. And then the big map, put this to one side. I don't know how I'm gonna leave this out for you because it is very, very big. And it looks like they still have the tracks around the outside of the map, which is kind of a shame, but that's okay. That's just a personal preference of mine. I'm gonna go off, drop this down and lay this out. And I'm gonna pick the camera up so you can have a look at it and try and get a feel for just the enormity of it. Big, beautiful. Nice artwork, really well done. Uh, you know, the quality here is excellent. Uh, you're not gonna get any warping on this one. It's just a monster scale map. Uh, and uh, pretty easy to play on too. Actually, you, when you wanna you know, set up a scenario, you can you know, fo fold it over to, to cater to your needs for the size of the scenario, generally speaking. All right, so uh, that's the uh, very impressive, that's the base module. One map, three counter sheets, the 
cards, the charts, the scenarios, your neoprene maps. And I'm gonna I'm gonna bust, I'm gonna have a look at these two elements in a minute, so the pocket battles and the strategy guide. Let's see the strategy guide. Let's do these now, I guess. Then we'll have a look at the airborne expansion that came with the um, Kickstarter. So it's going to talk to you and walk you through attacks in a terrain, how to use cover, uh, managing impulses and the enemy's forces, how to uh, deal with a whole variety of different tactical issues that you might want to deal with. There's, uh, there's some different things with movement in this game as well. It's a slightly, slightly different that you need to take into account. Uh, Malay is different in this game as well. So... Uh, I, I quite like mo you know, most of the systems in this game. They, they come across really well. This is a big, big module. How to handle Malay. This is a nice little system. Nice little uh, informational chart. So you get, uh, you know, strategy guide, use that to kind of get yourself through the, through the game. Now here, what have we got? I, I, I don't recall a reading about this. So this is kind of fresh to me. So I, can't, I may be uninformed. So what do we got? Map one, these are smaller maps by the looks of it. Now are they part of, and they're double sided. So we've got a winter map, and a summer map, and there are two of them here. And it would be appear that these are pretty used for playing smaller sized battles it would appear. Pocket battles, let me just read a little quickly what this is. Perhaps a Campaign? Maybe not. I don't know. This is a six turn scenario. This guy's a nine turn scenario. Seems like we're facing the same, I don't know, different forces here. Highway to Hell, December 19th, Noville. This is all set around, uh, all set around um, uh, the bulge by the looks of it. So that looks pretty cool. So maybe that's a little mini campaign. I, I don't know. We can look at that again at some other point. Where's my little knife for opening? Hello. There we go. All right, let's see what this airborne stack is going to have for us. Come on, guys. Please. Usually I take the shrimp off before I do these, but, and this is why, because <laughs> that can be challenging. All right, here we go. Airborne module. So once again, on the back, expand, it's an expansion, builds on uh, volume two. Another 30 by 41 map. Nice, a die count and a, and a sheet of uh, counters and a scenario booklet. So let's have a look at the counters that come in this. Here are the airborne scenarios. You'll get six in here. Various German forces fighting against the, sorry about the angle there, you probably couldn't see very much. Drop some Charlie. Les men. St. Mary Glace. Looks like a lot of stuff around St. Mary Glace. Might be a mini campaign again. Once again, not sure. But here we go. Here are our, are our erstwhile, whoops, upside down. Our erstwhile airborne dudes with uh, better morale, firepower, and range, and all that sort of good fun stuff. Uh, we've got uh, gliders and uh, uh, aircraft to drop. Uh, equipment and supply chits and some slightly higher end tanks for the Germans, of course. What would it be without the Germans getting some goodies? Werble winds, King Tigers, and just popped a camera out. They come out very nicely. There we go. Once again, the artwork is exceptional, which is pretty sexy. Okay, let's have a look at this this map. Whoa. And once again, I'm going to have trouble. I'm going to probably have to pick this up for you so you can see it. Whoa, see it all. Sorry about that. Nearly knocked the whole shooting match. Wow, this is really, really, an ugly, really big map. And there you go. I'm going to hold this up here so you can get a feel for it.
There you go. Lots of buildings in this one. So almost a little mini city village action going on there. Uh, some river roads. I almost said, thought that was a river for a second there. Then lots of open terrain here. Monster map. Monster map. Going to be a lot of fun to uh, dig into these guys. And, uh, I'm sure my buddy Dave Mosley will be keen to get into this as well. He likes this game as well. So we'll, we'll probably be jumping on this pretty soon. So folks, this is the old school tactical from Flying Pig Games. Well done, beautiful, beautiful components. If you're a component whore, this game's for you. If you like tactical World War II on the West Front, you're gonna like this game, no doubt. Uh, it's very consumable. And it has uh, developed a pretty uh, rabid following pretty quickly. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the look at it. Sorry it took so long to get through it all, but there's a lot of content here. Talk to you soon.